All right. Good morning, everyone. People, good morning. Yes, chalo. Uh, I'll quickly introduce myself and then we go ahead and start the class. I'm Sierra Sony and I'll be taking care of the tax session made GST portions for you guys, right? Now, uh, first thing first, you guys are done with direct tax? No problem. If you are done also very good. If you are not done also very good. No problem at all. Okay, everyone. I am just asking. Okay. So, people might be thinking, sir, what if I am not done? Okay. If you are done also very good. If you are not done also very good. No problem at all. We will go ahead and uh, let me quickly introduce you the syllabus. You guys already might be knowing, right? Are you guys know the syllabus? No. <laughs> Taxation has direct tax and indirect tax okay indirect tax okay direct tax i'll not be dealing with it but still direct tax is how many marks 50 indirect tax is also 50 right this much only i know about direct tax that is, is 50 marks right i know only about indirect tax now indirect tax uh, when we go ahead and speak about uh, sir how are we going to cover the syllabus uh, what are the books you will be providing you will have two books which will be there one is your GST total book. It's called the GST total. I'll show you the book. This is called the GST total book, which is there. Uh, we'll be referring to this book, sir. Why do you call it GST total? First of all, it has the complete law, which is there. Plus, uh, it has all the question answers, which is there. It has all the MCQs with reasoning, which is there. So I call it the total book because it completely covers everything. Now, one query which I always get from students is, Sir, do I have to refer the ICI material after I refer to your textbook? Sir, do I have to refer the ICI ka RTP which is there, MTP which is there, or ICI ka, sir, this book is there, that book is there, do I have to go ahead and refer? Papa, don't have to refer anything. Uh, the book which I am providing you now, uh, that is the version 8 book which you guys will be referring to. Now, version 8 uh, is completely amended and updated for your exams. How many of you are writing in your January uh, 25 item? January? Okay. If you are writing in January also, no problem. People who are writing in January also can refer to these classes. And people who are writing in May 24 also can go ahead and refer to these classes. Okay. When I say 24, no. Uh, because the whole year we have been teaching 24, 24, 24, 24. Now suddenly 25. So January 25 or May 25. If by chance I say January 24 or May 24, you remember. I am talking about what everyone? 25. 25. Okay. Because this whole year I have been talking 24, 24, 24. This is the first batch for the 25 attempt which is there. So, whenever I say 24, you assume, huh, sir is talking 25 only. Okay? And after one or two days, no, whatever I say, you will understand. Sir is telling this. No, but he means this. Okay? <laughs> huh, chalo. Everyone over here now. So, first of all, you guys understood the GST total book. First of all, your law is there. Whenever you see this book, you will be able to see that uh, every chapter of first law is given. First, the law of the chapter is given, what is the chapter consisting of and uh, then you have the question answers which are given and also you have the MCQ for every chapter which is given. Okay? Like that, we have approximately six, 16 chapters which are there. Once we are done with the 16 chapter, we have the big, big questions which come in the exam. So, the big questions and the case studies also have been given at the last so that uh, we can refer to them also. Okay? So, again, I am telling, it is the GST total book, so it covers everything. Do not have to worry about it, that you have to go here, there, ICM material, nothing is required. You go ahead and cover this and it is more than enough. Can we go ahead, everyone? Now, the next thing which I have gone ahead and given is the chart book. The second material which you guys would have referred, uh, which you guys would have received is the chart book which is there. Now, sir, what is the chart book, people? Uh, this is the chart book which is there. All the 16 chapter which is there. I have gone ahead and uh, compressed the 16 chapter in 39 pages. So, this 39 pages we study and we are done with IDT. IDT is very easy, Baba. If you see GST, the portions which you guys have is extremely easy. The day I am finishing the syllabus, you will tell me, sir, IDT is so, so, so easy. Because it is just 39 pages. Okay, everyone, if you see over here, 39 pages will be done with your complete IDT ka syllabus. Then, sir, why the GST total book is so fat? GST total book has so many pages and all. Baba, whatever I will be talking in the class, whatever I will be talking in the class, I have gone ahead and written it over here. So, basically, whenever I talk, whatever I talk, some examples I give, if you have future may any doubt after I am gone, gone means not gone, gone. <laughs> okay, huh? 
gone. After I'm gone taking the classes, if you by chance feel like, sir, there is a doubt which I have, then you can go and refer to your GST total book. You will see, oh, this is the example, sir, told. This example is there and we are able to recall. Are we clear, everyone? Now, the chart book which is there, uh, will be basically, will be using this as the main material. In the class, I'll be using the chart book as the main material, wherein, for an example, if I go and talk about the chapter number one, this is your chapter number one, that's it. And when we finish chapter number one, you will see that you understand and you remember everything, each and every point. Now, for an example, if I tell you this first point which is there, I'll go ahead and explain it to you, right, in the class, I'll go ahead and explain it to you. And after I have gone ahead and explained it to you, now by chance in future you want to refer after I am gone taking the classes, then you can go to go to your textbook and oh okay this was what sir had told this is written over here are we clear everyone clear yes. ah so all of you have to talk if you talk I will talk more done everyone no not to each other to me <laughs> ah next they told wow sir is telling to talk so uh, total book done chart book done now. The last one over here, which uh, we have, is the classroom notes. Sir, you are writing this now. Now, what happens? No. If I write like this, student will like, I will also write this. If you write like this, I will also write this. Sir, you write here, I will write here. You write this, I will also write. So, Baba, don't worry about it. Whatever I write in the class, these notes which are there, after every chapter gets over. Not every day, after every chapter gets over. Chapter-wise, the notes will be shared with you guys. Are we clear, everyone? Now. So, this I call as the classroom running notes. Okay. Now, these are the classroom running notes which are there. Now, all the students uh, over here, you guys have a telegram group, right? So, in your group, it will be shared. Okay. And now, uh, people who are watching at home, you guys are also there in the group. For you also, it will be shared. Now, all the students, uh, now one minute, okay. People who have gone ahead and taken the classes from Ramesoni.com. Now, for you guys, what you can do is, you can go to, uh, I'll tell you over here, I'll tell you in the next page, so that you guys can, uh, when the notes are there, you can go. You have to go over here, you have to go to free resources, in free resources, see enter. Jan 25 or people may uh, May 25 I'll go ahead and create one folder saying classroom running notes no I'll name fully okay everyone classroom running notes so whatever I'm writing over here chapter wise it will be uploaded over there you guys can go ahead and download okay this is only for those people who have gone ahead and taken the classes uh, from our website people over here People who are watching at home uh, live, you guys in your telegram group, the notes will be shared. Okay. During the class, I want everyone to 100% concentrate in the class. Whatever I am talking, whatever I am explaining, you have to understand that. If you by chance have anything which you want to write, see, in the class, I really want you guys to learn, learn and learn. If there is anything which you want to write, chapter wise when I upload, if you have to want to note down anything, you guys can note so still during the class if i feel like what you are writing i want to take down that thing now only then if it is something which you feel that uh, no i want to write now only quickly take a photo and we'll go, go over take everyone not my photo baba what am i writing take <laughs> because in the class i want to utilize the time to the maximum done everyone can we go ahead it is not that everyone stood with a camera and saying, sir, let me go ahead and take the class ka whole recording now. Okay, don't do that. Aram se sit, aram se relax, aram se keep listening. Done everyone? Chalo. We are done with the first thing. Uh, now all these three things I have gone ahead and told you. Uh, what else everyone? People? Mm, doubt? People who are over here, you guys can ask me the doubt in the class also. No sir, there will be no doubt. People watching at home. Uh, who are watching live now uh, for you guys you guys can post your doubt once I am uh, in in the class during the class because there are a lot of students who are there by chance uh, live student if I miss your doubt don't worry about it in the break I'll go ahead and take all your doubts which are there okay so aram to sit aram to keep listening once I'm done with one topic your doubt will be clear don't worry about it at all okay everyone Chalo. sir what about those students who have taken the classes from you baba don't worry about it i'll go ahead and tell you guys about the doubt asking also uh, i'll tell you okay sir what is your number my number is 
टू सेवन सिक्स थ्री सिक्स एट पीपल ओवर हियर ऑल्सो कैन नोट डाउन नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल बट क्लास का डाउट आस्क इन द क्लास गोइंग होम एंड टेक्सटिंग सर टूडे इन क्लास आई डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड दिस यू एक्सप्लेन ओवर एवर कॉल नो यू कम टू क्लास एंड आस्क पीपल Uh, the benefit of being in class is whatever doubts you have you guys can ask me right people who are watching recording later you guys can uh, drop me a whatsapp on this number wait for some time keep some patience i'll definitely get back to you with your uh, query ka answer theek hai everyone done sir i want to do whatsapp you can do whatsapp also sir i want to do telegram you can do telegram also sms very risky i might miss out theek hai chalo Oh, messages, SMS. You remember, you know SMS. Ah, ठीक है. चलो, we'll go ahead, everyone. Can we go ahead? Now, see, ah, uh, people. Now your exams are held uh, thrice in a year. One is January. One is January. Twenty-five. It will be there. See. For January till when का amendments are applicable. I want to talk about little about amendments. Sir, amendment means what everyone? Changes. Now what happens? No, GST is a new law. GST new is a new law and changes keep happening. Right, everyone? Change is the only thing which is not constant. Correct. So, Baba, changes will keep happening. Now for you guys, for your January twenty five exam, whoever is writing in January twenty five, people watching at home also, whoever is writing in January twenty five. January 25 के लिए six months before you have to see, before this six months का amendments are not applicable. Means prior to six months if any amendment has come, that is only applicable to you guys. Can you tell me six months means what? Till 30th of June. Till 30th of June, whatever changes have come till here are applicable to you guys. Are we clear, everyone? Now till here का all the changes have been incorporated in your textbook also. It has been incorporated in your chart book also. Till 30th of June. Plus the ICI also has gone ahead and released its amendment material for the January 24. So that also has been incorporated in the book. Now tell me one thing: those people who are writing in May 25, are the January ka amendments applicable to you guys? Naturally, yes or no? Yes. Now if you are writing, if you are writing your exam in May, can you tell me till when ka amendments are applicable to you? May 25. You leave. Four months, Jan, Feb, March, April. You leave it. December and November you leave it. So people, can I say? Can I say? April gone, March, Feb, Jan. Then December, November gone. So till November, the amendments are not applicable. So can you tell me till when the amendments are applicable to you? Thirty-first October two thousand twenty-four. But today is what everyone? September just started, right? And uh, The book which is there with you guys, what I have gone ahead and done is till because it is fourth of September today, till thirty first of August. Whatever amendments had come are incorporated in your book. You take it to be thirty first August or twentieth, twenty eighth, twenty fifth of August. You take it because after that the book went for printing and the book has come to you guys. Now, sir, to till here ka amendments, you take it to be till here ka all the changes have been incorporated for you guys. So, sir, uh, till thirtieth June you told the amendments are have been incorporated. Now after this also some amendments will come and this will come. This to you told you have gone ahead and incorporated, sir. What about this, Baba? Don't worry about this. This I will go ahead and anyways cover in the class. it is already incorporated in your book okay everyone now this amendments which will come i'll also go ahead and provide it to you on your on the youtube channel which is there are baba the institute ka youtube channel which is there no there it will be provided to you guys are we clear everyone people who have taken the classes from me uh, you will find it on my youtube channel ramesh soni theek hai there i'll go ahead and provide the amendments which are there so this amendments which are there will be covered in the class this amendments if anything comes Will also be uploaded before your exam. Don't worry about it. Are we clear, everyone? Aram, relax, and sit, Baba. Whatever changes will come, also it will be very small, small changes which are there, which will be provided to you guys. Okay, everyone. People watching at home, you have to tell me yes, no, don't know. Take it now. Oh, sir, anyone writing in September? Or it can be there? No. We'll clarify that also, sir. I am writing in September twenty-five. people can you tell me september means what august july june may april march 
gone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. March also gone, right? So, till when commandments are applicable to you guys? 28 February. So, sir, what will happen from this date till this date commandment? Whatever amendments will come, I will provide it to you on YouTube. Don't worry about it. Now, as of now, till here commandments will be going ahead and covering. After this, till what date everyone? 28 of February, whatever amendments will come, that also will be provided to you guys. One thing you have to understand is, when your exams are there, prior 6 months commandments are not applicable to you. Before that, whatever changes have come, that are applicable to you guys. Are you clear everyone? Sir, where do those changes come? Baba, don't worry about it. On the, when we are learning, slowly, 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 during the class, I will go ahead and tell it to you. Where do we see those changes which are there? So, first thing first, I have already clarified to you guys about the books which are there, right? Classroom notes which we are writing, that also will be provided to you guys. Uh, amendments, I have already told you, if you are writing an exam in January 24, the book classes are completely amended. Uh, May 25 student, two months commandment, that also will be provided to you guys, don't worry about it. And September 24 students also, those amendments which will come will be provided to you guys free of cost. Arams, relax and keep listening to the class. Very small, small changes come. Those are very easy to understand. Now, everyone over here. Sir, what is this student telling? He is telling, sir, uh, if we give example exam in September 25, that is what I told you, no? If you are giving exam in September 25, uh, then. Then also, all the amendments which are there will be provided to you guys. Take Arams, relax. Till, till here, come amendments anyways, I will cover in the class. After this, what amendments will happen till 28th of February? I will be going ahead and coming. Okay? Chal. Everyone over here now. Sir, blue. Who is this? Chetan. Pahle class padli. First study the class. Sir, blueprint ka kya ho? Are blueprint. Ta Chetan. First you study the class. Study in the class. Aram se relax. Aram se sit. Aram se study. After that, we will talk about all these things. Okay? Chalo. Everyone over here now. Now, uh, let's start with the first chapter, which is there. Before I start with the first chapter, can you guys tell me, everyone, what is the difference between direct tax and indirect tax, everyone? Direct tax. Imposed on individual. Okay. Then, progressive in nature. Okay. Regressive in nature. Indirect tax is regressive. Okay, you tell me. I'll I'll draw. I you you guys have to understand. I love drawing. Okay, everyone. I will draw. You you tell me what I'm talking about. Okay, everyone. See here. Who is this? Sir, your name? Dinakar. Huh? Dinakar. Dinakar. This is Dinakar. Wait. Ah, this is almost Dinakar. Okay. Dinakar is running a restaurant. Dinakar is running a restaurant, okay? Uh, what is your name? Sneha. This is Dinakar's friend, Sneha. Sneha went to... Are, this is... Uh, okay, one masala dosa. Okay? Dinakar, Dinakar is running a restaurant. Everyone, Dinakar is running a... Uh, and this is Dinakar ka friend, Sneha, okay? Now, Dinakar went ahead and sold food to her. Food, food, restaurant mein food is only sold. No. She went ahead and paid 100 rupees plus 10 rupees tax. Okay. And Dinakar paid 10 rupees tax to the government. Can you tell me the tax which he, he has collected on the food and given to the government is direct tax or indirect tax? Yeah. Indirect tax. Why? See, because ultimately paid by the ultimate Bakra. Bakra means the scapegoat. Right, everyone? So, see, actually what happened over here? Government imposed the tax on Dinakar. Told Dinakar, you have to pay the tax, correct? But what Dinakar told? Government, you want tax? No. I will make the ultimate consumer. Ultimate consumer, the ultimate Bakra, I will collect and I will give it to you. Is my point clear? So, people, this tax is what? Direct tax or indirect tax? Yeah. Paid by her indirectly through him. Do you guys agree with me? Yeah. Everyone, 
आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन टू टॉक यस एवरी वन हाँ सी यू टू टॉक सो मच दैट after the class we are like ha i remember everything people will talk in the class people will talk with me people watching at home if you talk with me you will remember everything if you don't talk you will sleep can we go ahead everyone now you tell me one thing dinakar no full year he sold food full year he sold food and he made 10 lakh rupees sale how much was the sale everyone and his expenses was 8 lakh rupees he made a profit of 2 lakh okay i will go ahead and say again you will say sir minimum limit is this much ha ah, he expense 5 lakh and he paid a profit of how much everyone now 5 lakh rupees pay also he has to pay some tax which is also imposed on him and burden is on his pocket only what is this tax called direct tax why direct tax imposed on me and taken also from my pocket so we go ahead and call it everyone direct tax done sir this point direct tax in direct tax is clear to all of you yes chalo now this much only i told no i know about direct tax now we'll move toward everyone indirect tax theek hai chalo if i go ahead and talk about indirect tax which is the indirect tax we are going to study everyone g s t so can you tell me when i say g s t g means what everyone s means what services t means it means it's a tax on goods and services do you guys agree with me so first of all for this tax to be imposed what is the most important thing it should be there something has to be goods or something has to be services chalo theek hai i have mobile phone mobile phone is what goods or service goods can you charge gst on me ha huh? charge charge why you can't charge gst on me now because i have to sell it i have to do something with it do you guys agree with me yes or no theek hai i have goods which is mobile phone i went ahead and sold one mobile phone that sold word in gst is called supply for an example i'll tell you i know how to teach but i'm sleeping at home aram se you tell me can government charge gst on me ramesh you know how to teach you can you can provide service i'll charge gst on you so what do i have to do i have to give the service i have to come over here teach you guys instead of that if i am sleeping at home can government wake me up and say hey give tax give tax <laughs> yes or no why no because i am not providing the providing word is called supply over here what is the main word used supply goods sold no 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 goods supply service supply is my point clear so can you tell me one thing once goods and service i got and supply can you charge gst so it is called gst will be imposed do you guys agree with me okay so tell me one thing then i'll ask you one question there is one small kid on the road side theek okay? hai and he is selling supposingly socks you know socks they will sell 100 rupees ka packet ka one socks then when is socks goods is it supplied is gst imposed now what is the problem that small boy then gst got imposed why it small boy so no gst tell no louder louder you have to tell your thoughts sir he does not have gst number see whenever anybody in the country goods or service is being supplied gst gets imposed immediately government says ramesh you know what in gst you are just a partner of the government always government has fixed you want to do business on mobile phone you have to give me 18% now you want to pay that 18% from your pocket or you may want to make the consumer the bakra that is your question so i will collect from the consumer so government is my partner you remember government is over here for me and government is my partner partner told ramesh you want to start mobile phone ka business i told yes collect gst and give 
तो बेसिकली गवर्नमेंट बिकम्स पार्टनर ऑफ एवरी वन इन द कंट्री सो वेन यू स्टार्ट ए बिजनेस यू हैव टू कलेक्ट द जी एस टी एंड गिव इट टू द गवर्नमेंट एक्चुअली आई हैड टू पे इम्पोज ऑन द गुड्स एंड सर्विस विच आर इम्पोज ऑन द वर्ड गुड्स एंड सर्विस विच आर सप्लाई बट आई अल्टीमेटली कलेक्ट एंड गिव इट टू द गवर्नमेंट इज माई पॉइंट क्लियर टू ऑल चलो नाउ ली सर नाउ यू आर टेलिंग सर जी एस टी गॉट इम्पोज बट वाई डेंट वी कलेक्टेड वाई डेंट वी कलेक्टेड बिकॉज देर आर टू थिंग वन इज इम्पोजिंग इम्पोजिंग एंड वन इज कलेक्टिंग इम्पोजिंग मीन्स गवर्नमेंट सेज रमेश As soon as goods you sell in the country, GST gets imposed on the goods. Now I should collect and I should pay, but that collection GST has to be collected and paid only by a registered person. Only by whom, everyone? Registered person. So tell me one thing. Now I want to ask you guys. First of all, there has to be goods and service. Goods and service has to be supply. Okay, I came to class. Service. Am I supplying the service? Did GST get imposed on my service? Yes. Now what will I do? I will collect GST from. I'll collect GST from the ultimate. Bakra. Everything told in class is only for classroom understanding. Okay, everyone. You feel yourself as having two horns. Okay, collecting the GST from you and giving it to the government. Is my point clear to all? So that is collected and paid by a registered. I am a GST registered person. So will I collect from you? And will I pay? Yes. Instead of me, supposingly, you think I am not a registered person. Will I collect and will I pay or not? So till here will the change happen? GST got imposed on my service, but I will not collect and pay. Government says what you know? A hey, small person, 10, 10, 20 lakh rupees ka sale and all. I don't want GST from you. Government wants to be partner with big people. government is telling small people will not trouble and hence government says anything sold in the country gst gets imposed but you collect and pay only if you are registered person so that guy on the road side did he meet the first step did he meet the second step did he meet the third step but what he did not meet was fourth step where he was not a registered is my point clear to all of you theek this much i have told you now this is the basic gst which is there and you know what we will be talking about all this only when we go ahead and learn no first of all we will be learning goods and service then goods and service has to be supplied gst will get charged imposed means gst will get charged now this one you leave it then you have to take registration you have to collect and you have to pay are we clear everyone so this whole flow which is there when we are going in and learning gst is a flow i have written over here no gst flow the last day you will see that the whole gst which we have gone ahead and learned is just one chapter from first chapter to the last chapter is actually one chapter only and i have seen one thing with the students is uh, first day came second day did not come third day came fourth day did not come baba if you do this one day miss means next day you will not understand sir what if i did not come one day can i watch my backup and come to the class okay if you guys have backup system which is there theek hai you guys have backup is it so you can watch and then come for the next day otherwise next day you will be thinking what is going on in the class is my point clear to all of you so whenever you miss the class also next day you should complete your last day class and come otherwise next day you will not understand is my point clear to all and the best thing i would want from all of you is over the 15 17 days which we have the class every day come to class don't miss it at all because going home and covering the class is very very difficult yes or no everyone chalo everyone over here theek hai we'll we'll go ahead and start with the first first chart which is there sir you told you'll start with goods and service baba before we start with goods and service also this first first chapter which is there no it is one basic chapter which is there but a very very important chapter people can we go ahead everyone ha chalo gst in india and introduction the first first chart which is there gst in india and introduction this is a very basic chapter this is a very very basic chapter but but this chapter is the main foundation chapter we must learn this chapter well chalo the first thing it says article number 366 clause 12a what is this 366 12a people do you know the constitution of india 
Have you studied about the Constitution of India? All of you, louder no everyone. Ha! Ah, you have studied about the Constitution of India. In Constitution of India, we have the articles which are, sir, you are teaching Constitution of India. Baba, we have to learn little, little about the Constitution of India also in GST. Okay? You have article number 366. In the article 366, there is a definition which has been inserted for GST under 12A. Article number 366 means, sir, you take as of now article to be like a small, small chapter. Paragraph. What will you say? It's like a small chapter which is there. Okay? See, in that chapter, definitions are given. In this article number 366, big chapter, mein, small, small definitions are given. In that definition, the definition number 12 was there already. After that, government inserted in between. Whenever government inserts anything in between, na, the name will be, because 13 is already there. So, how to insert something in between 12 and 13? They named it as 12A. Are we clear everyone? So do we have to remember this? No, why you don't have to remember this. But what I'm telling is, see, whenever anything, any section number, uh, rule number, etc. That at intermediate level, you don't have to remember it. Don't worry about it. But sir, why did you write over here? At least for your reference, you should know, know where it is written. Learning should be 100%. First, we'll learn 100%. And then we'll also talk that from exam point of view, how we have to go ahead and write. There are a lot of things which will come. Don't worry about it. Over one or two days, you will understand everything. Can we go ahead, everyone? Now, the first first thing is article number 366 clause. This is called clause. Clause means there are separate, separate definitions which are there. In that clause number 12a gives the definition of GST. So, GST ka meaning is, GST means People, can you tell me what is GST? Goods and service. Uh, yeah, I am not asking full form. It's a tax when you are supplying what? Goods and so whenever goods and service will be supplied, what will get charged? GST. I did not say that, Baba. This is told by Article number three sixty six. See, GST means any any whatever name you tell any tax on supplying of what good services or both except alcoholic Baba, liquor 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 that of your alcoholic liquor sir morning morning you started alcoholic liquor here are baba what to do alcoholic liquor for human sir why did they write like this see government told what gst means any tax on supplying of what goods service or both sir what do you mean by both you came to class one minute we give you class service we give you books books is what goods so it's a combination so whenever they say both both means what it's a combination of goods and service is my point clear to all now sir but why did they write except alcoholic liquor for human consumption see central government wanted to get gst in india central government wanted to get what everyone gst State governments were telling, okay, we will get GST in India. But when GST came, no, what happened? I'll tell you. Here, central government stood. Here, state government stood. In between, no. What is this, everyone? Are tell no. Uh, this is fire. Okay, everyone. Now, they put one fire in between. Now, Central government from this side, central government ka some taxes were there. They went ahead and put it in the fire. Swaha, I don't want it. Thikha? They told, okay, central excise duty, we will put it in the fire. Central excise duty. State government told, okay, we will put in the fire. State excise duty. I'll tell you about the meaning of these taxes little later. Okay, everyone. Then uh, central government told, okay, service tax, we will put in the fire. Swaha, we don't want to collect anymore. State government told, okay, we will also put in the fire, what? Are we clear, everyone? And you know what? But state government, what they did is, this side, no. They held the alcohol ka bottle and kept. And they told, no, 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 we will not put in the fire. See, when central government put central excise duty, state government put state excise duty, here they put service tax, here they put VAT, what came out was what, everyone? GST. GST. And now both the governments started charging what everyone? GST. But state government held the bottle and kept. Central government told put in the fire. They told if we put 
alcoholic liquor if you have to put in the fire then we don't want gst central government told okay fine central government wanted gst very badly so central government went ahead and told okay fine leave it you keep the alcohol now what was the reason why state government did not leave alcohol tell me you know what you tell me one thing we will draw whom will we draw sir name shashank this is shashank over here theek hai this is shashank theek hai now see people one minute central government told what state government told see we will not leave our alcohol government told why central government ko state government told see a person is happy or a person is sad person will drink <laughs> correct people person is happy or person is sad person will drink person has money or no money person will drink happiness sadness person is drinking rich poor person is drinking recession depression person is drinking yes or no everyone and hence state government told see because of coming of gst it can happen that what we were earning earlier might be we start earning less but whatever happens sir alcohol may there is no recession which will happen yes or no everyone and hence state government went ahead and told we will not leave our alcohol because alcohol is always progressing sir alcohol revenue keeps coming and hence we will not leave our alcohol and that is why and the state central government told okay fine we will not touch your alcohol they told no 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 don't just say take mother promise and hence <laughs> in the constitution of india in the constitution of india they told constitution of india is what mother act mother act the mother of all act is what and hence state government told in the mother act right take mother promise that gst means any tax on supplying goods services or both but you will not touch what alcoholic liquor for human can i go ahead everyone tell me one thing can state can central government touch alcoholic liquor for factory consumption yes baba in paint factories and all alcohol is used that pay tax will come but which is the non taxable item in gst now the only good which is non taxable as of now which i have taught you is alcoholic liquor for human are we all clear till here everyone chalo now can you tell me what do you mean by tax everyone tax means compulsory payment i have drawn over here sir is it voluntary or compulsory sir i don't want to pay no okay don't pay is it like this or you have to pay so it's a compulsory now you tell me one thing for an example i'll go ahead and draw work okay take everyone uh who is it madam your name aishwarya this is one shop this is aishwarya ka shop theek hai everyone sir what is aishwarya doing aishwarya is running a pan shop you know pan shop are pan 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 yes everyone pan shop theek hai only for classroom purpose now what is happening everyone listen every day one person is coming you tell me who is this hey wait no no you would not have seen him wait Ah, who is this? Who is this? Every day he comes. He tells, "Hey, Aishwarya, give hundred rupees." Every day he is taking hundred rupees and going. Aishwarya, compulsory payment or voluntary payment? Then why is it not tax? And that hundred rupees every day which he is paying, that is also compulsory. Government is also taking compulsory. Why is this not tax? people watching at home kindly first listen what i am telling abhishek uh, kindly first listen what i am telling after that all your doubts will go you first listen every ha huh, tell me why is it not tax 
because it is not lawful because it is not collected under an act when something is collected under an act only then it is called what everyone tax here we are not calling it tax because it is not collected under an act it is collected by the gunda on his own done gunda means goon so first of all it is a compulsory payment secondly it is done under a thirdly it is given to the government why because government is running the country to run the country they need money yes or no everyone so basically government takes the money from all of you and invests the money for your benefit only so that government can provide you various public services what are the public services government provides everyone louder education infrastructure transportation medical facilities all these are provided by the government what government has some factory where it is manufacturing money or you are only the factory you are only the factory from you they will take and invest for you only can we go ahead everyone so that government can provide you various public tell me one thing we learned only two lines till now what are the two lines we understood gst means what everyone with me tax on what supply goods services or both except alcoholic liquor for you but very good very good secondly tax is what a compulsory paid under an to the government so that government can provide you various public like health infrastructure etc can i go ahead everyone sir all this are very very easy can we go ahead everyone but still i am going slow because the first day we have to learn everything slowly slow first chapter i really go slow because the first chapter is a very basic chapter and it is one of the very important chapter to form your base see the building a base is not strong no the building will come up ding 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 moving here and there the base has to be very strong so the first 3 4 days which are there will be going really slow because the first 3 4 first two chapters are the base building chapters can we go ahead everyone everyone over here now direct tax and indirect tax what are the difference you guys already know direct tax is imposed on it is imposed on me burden can i shift or only i have to pay from my pocket burden is on the person on whom tax is imposed indirect tax is imposed on person or goods and service it is imposed on me or the goods and service which i am supplying burden is shifted to the ultimate the ultimate consumer pe burden is shifted can i go ahead everyone imposed on my goods and service but do i pay or i shift the burden can we go ahead everyone next In example is income tax here the example is gst and customs now the customs which are there customs we will talk in ca final custom duty is basically whenever you import and you export no then you have to pay something called custom duty that import and export ka custom duty which is there that is also indirect tax if i get some goods from outside india i'll pay import duty that ultimately i'll collect when i sell to the consumer i'll collect from him or her but custom duty i'll talk in ca final level which is there in intermediate when we are talking in future might be little bit will come when it will come i'll talk about it can we go ahead everyone but as of now for you indirect tax is what everyone this is progressive in nature direct tax is progressive what is progressive means everyone what is the basic slab rate everyone 0 to up to 2 lakh 50000 nothing Correct zero income then nothing five lakh then five percent ten lakh then twenty percent correct twenty lakh then thirty percent more than fifty lakh then surcharge more than one crore then more surcharge yes or no everyone it means the more zero earning zero tax little earning little tax little more earning little more tax little more earning little more tax it means tax is progressing as and when you progress tax also will progress you earn more tax will also be more is my point clear what is indirect tax you tell me one thing i went to eat one masala dosa in one shop he charged me 20 rupees plus 5 rupees tax for an example modi ji went are modi ji baba our prime minister he went to one dosa shop and he went and ate masala dosa for him what 20 rupees plus no tax or 20 rupees plus 5 rupees only tax theek hai you went for you also it is same 
one very extremely poor person went for them also same it means it is same for all income level means even if you are earning more also the tax is same indirect tax is regressive regressive means what everyone same for all income level whether you are a very rich person whether you are a poor person doesn't matter it is same for all income level can we go ahead everyone people please sit till here and tell me if you are 100% clear only then we go ahead sit till here everyone clear till here now what i have written over here is by chance they tell you in the exam write the features of indirect tax you can write this four as the features also what are the four so indirect tax is imposed on goods and what do you mean by features everyone what are my features eyes are there nose is there hair is there correct or not the same way indirect tax ka feature is what everyone indirect tax is imposed on goods and services sir indirect tax the ultimate bakra baba in the exam don't write bakra anywhere and come ha huh. indirect tax the burden is ultimately shifted to the ultimate <laughs> consumer indirect tax the example is what gst indirect tax is regressive in nature is my point clear to all chalo now i want to go ahead and talk about this deficiencies tell me one thing whenever you buy something new whenever you buy something new there has to be some problem with the old one only then you buy something new are yes or no everyone there has to be some problem with the old things only then you buy generally new thing which is there so tell me one thing when deficiency in the existing tax system when they say existing remember one thing existing they don't do not mean over here the currently existing currently existing is gst when gst came in 2017 that time what tax taxes were existing that tax system mein what were the problem because of which gst came are we clear everyone number 1 cascading effect chalo i want to teach you a cascading effect i'll come to the textbook and i'll talk little about cascading effect you don't go here and there baba trust me my book and your book is exactly same theek hai when i'm explaining aram se relax aram se sit and keep listening when i want you guys to open any textbook anything i will tell you guys theek hai as of now you aram se sit with your chart book listen here yeah. tell me one thing first of all one manufacturer will sell the goods to home wholesaler wholesaler will sell the goods to home retailer will sell the goods to home our ultimate bakra will there yes or no everyone theek hai see earlier what used to happen i'll first tell you about it and then we'll talk more by chance anyone has any doubt anywhere you lift your hand sit down once i complete the topic i'll get back to you theek hai everyone ready everyone yes. ha so manufacturer went ahead and sold the goods to the wholesaler theek hai manufacturer told my cost plus my profit for an example his cost was 80 rupees plus 20 rupees profit he added and he sold the goods at 100 rupees earlier what used to happen no on every manufacturer government used to go ahead and say if you manufacture if you manufacture on manufacturing there used to be a tax which used to be called what everyone excise duty are we clear everyone for an example the excise duty used to be 10% now when we say excise duty that was also a tax tax on what everyone manufacturing whenever you manufacture you have to pay a tax which was called everyone excise, excise duty 10 rupees excise duty came how much is the total everyone 110 now he manufactured at the time of manufacturing he paid excise duty just to manufacture now when you go and sell it for selling within the state when outside the state i'll talk later within the state whenever you sell any item baba manufacturer will manufacture and eat himself or he will sell so when he is selling he has to pay what everyone vat value added vat used to be for an example 10% i am taking 10 10% good morning madam chalo can we go ahead everyone over here now next vat is 10% can you tell me 10% on this everyone how much 11 How much is the total? Can you tell me what happened in this? In hundred and ten, was ten percent tax there? Ten percent tax was there. On the ten rupees, did VAT get charged? Baba, tax is there. On tax, did we charge another tax? On this ten rupees, did we charge ten percent VAT? See, on hundred rupees, so we charged. But did we also charge on this ten rupees? it means did we charge tax on tax 
can you see the cost of the item has gone up by 1 rupee yes or no it means has the has the selling price or has the product ka cost for consumer become expensive or cheaper expensive. why because tax on tax people government ka objective is to charge gst on gst tax on tax okay so what is the problem government is earning more only no baba government ka objective is not to only keep earning more 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 so that all the people who are there in the country they don't have money only inflation should go up so much if inflation goes up ultimately who has to pay the people for eating food correct or not so government ka objective is not to rob everyone take every all the money from the people no government ka objective is that when we are charging tax we are charging on goods and service earlier also it was on goods and service only now the name has been given as goods and service see ultimately on manufacturing goods excise duty was there on selling vat was there so was it a tax again on goods only yes everyone but can you see over here tax pay another tax is charged and because of that the item ka price is going up and hence this was a problem in the earlier tax system tax on tax see when you buy something okay if one tax ke upar on one tax another tax is charged we go ahead and call it what everyone cascading effect cascading effect means what on one tax another tax can you see this everyone and tell me if you guys are clear with this point in 110 10% excise duty was there which was a tax on this we charge vat which is tax on tax on 10 rupees did we charge another tax also so this is called tax on tax and because of this the selling price of items become expensive and ultimately the consumers when they have to pay something more it means is the inflation going up in the country and that is a cascading effect and cascading effect is bad for the economy or good for the economy bad when the economy may inflation is going up that is bad for the economy because people will not be able to purchase item when people can't have purchasing power because all their money is going more out whenever you are buying something that everything is expensive and hence government has to manage inflation also and this was one problem in the earlier tax system can i go ahead everyone i want to talk little more about it but it will come no sandvat credit to dealers or traders people credit ka concept i want to talk about it but little i will tell you first tell me one thing if i go ahead and tell you for an example i am a shopkeeper over here i sell goods to the consumer this is the consumer okay everyone this is the consumer and i am a, a wholesaler who is there and okay i am a retailer who is there and uh, this is a manufacturer who is there please understand this concept don't worry about it little basic i'll give you first manufacturer sold the goods to me people over here at 100 rupees he charged me excise duty of 10 rupees 110 he charged me vat of how much 11 ultimately how much did i pay 121 tell me one thing me as a retailer did i become the bakra Yes or no, everyone? Did I pay ten rupees and eleven rupees? What will I tell the government, sir? When I sell to the consumer, I will make consumer the bakra. You made me only the bakra. Yes or no, everyone? See what happened. He sold the goods to me. He collected the tax from me. He gave the government how much? Central government used to take this ten rupees excise duty, and that used to go to state government, and state government got eleven rupees. Are we all clear till here? But ultimately, did I become the bakra? Who should become the bakra? Now, how do we make consumer the bakra? So when I will sell the consumer, I will collect the tax and I will give it to the government. Who should be the bakra ultimately? Retailer or consumer? But as of now, who is the bakra? retailer so i told him sir why did you charge tax on me your person sold me the goods i paid the tax he paid to you ultimately you are taking from me only i am to your partner yes or no everyone tell me everyone is this point clear 
and hence people went and cried to the government and told sir why did you take the tax from me the government used to tell them okay no problem do one thing sell the goods sell the supposingly everyone listen carefully if you sell the goods at 200 rupees you will not charge VAT. what will you charge you will not charge excise duty because you are not manufacturing you will only charge what for an example, I sold the goods at 200 rupees. How much with the VAT which I'll charge? 10%? 20 rupees? Ultimate consumer gave me how much? 20? 200 to Baba for the selling. And 20 rupees what? VAT? Please tell me everyone, are we clear till here? Can you tell me how much VAT did I collect from the consumer? 20. I will tell, sir, I collected 20. You know, you made the made with the Bakra. I paid him. He paid you. Sir. That bad, you please give it back to me. Do you guys agree with me? I will tell God, sir, you had made me the bakra. People, you had made me the bakra. You collected 10 rupees bad from me. Please give me it back. You know what happens. Government says, whenever you buy anything, no, you take the credit of it. If you are not the consumer, if you are going to ultimately sell it to someone, I will give you credit. Credit means this amount of tax which I paid, no. Government says, no, 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 you are not the bakra. You keep it as a... Credit means excise duty, I will get 10 rupees ka credit. VAT, I will get how much rupees ka credit. So tell me one thing, what will I do with this? I will tell, see sir, I collected from the consumer 20 rupees. I had already paid him 11, I had already paid him 10, I, he had paid you 21 rupees. Do you guys agree with me? So that 21 you already got, people, government, you already got 21. From the consumer, I collected how much? 20. So I will deduct this 21 which I had already paid you. I had paid you already 21. But I collected from the consumer how much? Okay. You think that I sold for 300. How much did I collect? So ultimately from the consumer I collected 30. So sir, customer is the bakra. No sir. I will collect 30. I will give it to you. But sir, you had made me the bakra. How much did I already pay you? That I will not pay. Because that is not my liability to pay. Ultimately, mm -hmm. consumers I am collecting. Yes or no, everyone? And hence, government will tell you, okay, use this 21 and pay me only how much? So, did government already get 21 earlier? Did government get 9 now? Can you tell me customer paid how much? 30? One minute, people. Customer paid how much? 30? Government got how much? 10 plus 11 plus 9 now, right? Yes or no, everyone? This should be the ultimate thing. But you know what used to happen. People, did you understand this, everyone? Shall I repeat or got it? See, you know what used to happen? Whenever I used to buy, I used to pay excise duty and I used to pay VAT. Whenever I will sell, I will collect what, everyone? VAT. VAT payment ke liye, I will use excise duty and VAT over here. I will say 30 may say, I already have 21 rupees with me and I will pay only 9 to the government. Government got how much? 30. And customer paid how much? Is it matching? But this matching never used to happen earlier. You know why? Earlier, the retailers never used to be registered under excise duty. People understand everyone. Is this point clear to all? Shall I repeat or got it? Everyone. Louder. Huh. So what used to happen? No. Excise duty, I never used to get the credit. You know why? Because as a retailer, you are not registered under excise. So you used to get only credit of what everyone? VAT. I want to ask you one thing. If I will get VAT ka credit only, now I want to ask you over here. Can you tell me, I am a wholesaler. I am registered only under VAT. I am not registered under? Can you tell me, if I am not registered under excise, how much credit will I get out of this? Which one, which one? Excise duty credit? No. VAT? How much? Okay. Now I want to ask you, when I am selling this item, what is my cost? If I did not get the credit of something, how much is my cost? 121 say, 11 rupees government told, okay Ramesh, I bought the item, I paid 121. Government is giving me back how much rupees? 11 rupees. Can you tell me what is my cost? Please tell me everyone, are we clear with this point? That 110 is my cost. First of all, everyone tell me, are we all clear with this point that 110 is my cost?
Yes, everyone, please tell me this one. Are we clear with this point? How much is my cost over here? 110. Everyone got it till here. Sure. Why not 121? Because 11 rupees. So tell me one thing. If I don't get any credit, does it become a part of my cost? So in 110, is 10 rupees ka excise duty still there? Yes or no, everyone? Now, I added my profit supposingly of 10%. How much profit do I add? 11 rupees. Can you tell me, in this cost, is 10 rupees excise duty there? Tell no. What is my selling price? 120. 120? 1. On this, when I am selling, what will I charge? VAT. I will charge VAT. Can you tell me one thing? In this selling price, is there any tax which is included? Which one? Louder everyone. In this cost, already this excise duty was there because I did not get the credit. Do you guys agree with me? And hence, can you tell me in this 121, how much tax was already there? 10. Again on tax, did I charge tax? Again, don't you think inflation is going up? Did you guys understand this? So tell me one thing. If I buy something and I paid excise duty, that excise duty, do I get the credit as a wholesaler? I don't get. Tell no. Yes or no? no? I'll explain you again. You have to tell me. Everyone over here. I bought. People listen carefully. I People listen. See. Everyone. This is your first class with indirect tax. Right? It will take you little time to digest. But I want everyone to talk. If you don't talk, you will not understand. And if you don't talk, I will not understand if you understood or not. Done everyone. Ah, so tell me. Now. I bought this item for 100 rupees, correct? Excise duty 10 rupees. On this VAT I paid and 121. First of all, did tax go on tax? Good or bad? Okay. Now I want to ask you second thing. This goods came to the wholesaler. Okay. Wholesaler is not registered under excise. So, will he get excise duty ka credit or he will not get? 10 rupees ka credit he will not get. Will he cry? Yes, but government says keep crying. I can't do anything. You are not registered under excise. So, you will not get the credit also under excise. Okay. Next. VAT. Value added tax. How much? Are all, all the people who are registered, are all people registered under VAT? Yes. People, if you are registered under, if you are a person who was uh, selling the goods earlier, you are registered under VAT. So, he got the credit of how much everyone? 11. Now, when he is selling, can you tell me out of 121 if government, see, I paid government co 121, government gave me, I paid him 121, he paid to the government 21, government gave me credit only of 11 rupees. Credit means what everyone, government says, next time, people, next time when you collect anything from the customer, you can deduct this amount. Is my point clear to all? And hence, can you tell me if government gave me only 11 rupees ka credit, how much was the cost out of this 121? 110. Is this point 100% clear to all? My purchase cost is 110. But this 110 includes what everyone? 10 rupees excise duty. Is my point clear to all? Now on this, I added a profit of 10% which is 11. And I ultimately sold for 120. On 121, when I will sell, I have to charge again what? How much? 10%. So I collected 12.1. And 133 may I sold to the ultimate customer. Is this point clear to all? Can you tell me what will I say now? In this, was excise duty there? On excise duty, did you charge VAT again? Yes. Is it tax on tax again? Why did this happen? Because this guy did not get excise duty ka credit. So whenever you don't get credit, it becomes a part of your cost. And again, what will happen? Tax on tax will start. Do you guys agree with me? So people... No SANVAT. SANVAT means central excise duty is also called what everyone? SANVAT. Central value added tax. See, this VAT which is there, no. One minute, one minute, one minute. Listen. This value added tax is collected by state government. This excise duty was collected by whom everyone? So central excise duty is also called central VAT. Is my point clear to all? Earlier, it used to be called what everyone? Central value added tax. Is my point clear to all? Now, no SANVAT credit. To trader or dealer. People do this. 
ट्रेडर और डीलर गेट सेंडवेट का क्रेडिट और नो वेन दे डोंट गेट द क्रेडिट वट विल है दिस विल बिकम पार्ट ऑफ द कॉस्ट and when it becomes a part of when tax becomes a part of the cost i want to understand from you when tax will become a part of the cost what will happen tax on tax because cost me if tax is there again when you sell on that tax you will charge again a tax is this good for the economy or bad is my first point and second point clear to all of you you have to see till here tell me if you are 100% clear only then we go ahead everyone please tell me people watching at home are we clear till here Shall I explain again or got it? Everyone got it. Now, the next is double taxation due to non-integration of VAT and service tax. Okay, listen. VAT. What is VAT, everyone? VAT used to be collected earlier by the state government. ठीक है? Service tax used to be collected by the central government. Earlier, what used to happen? VAT used to be collected by state government. Service tax used to be collected by. I want to ask you one question. I am a teacher. ठीक है? You know, to teach, what I did, I bought an iPad. Earlier, for for an example, to teach, I bought an iPad. iPad is goods. So whenever you buy anything, supposing I bought the iPad for one lakh rupees, I used to pay VAT. ठीक है एवरीवन लिसन केयरफुली आई यूज टू पे व्हाट 18 परसेंट फॉर एन एग्जांपल वैट एटीन थाउजेंड रुपीज आई पेड व्हाट डिड आई पे वैट कैन यू टेल मी हाउ मच क्रेडिट विल आई गेट अर्लियर लिसन इफ यू आर ए पर्सन हु इज नॉट द कंज्यूमर व्हाट एवर टैक्स अर्लियर और नाउ एवरीवन रिमेंबर वन थिंग इफ यू पे एनी इनडायरेक्ट टैक्स एंड यू आर नॉट द कंज्यूमर This credit ka concept will settle down by the end of the class. Don't worry about it. Aram se keep listening, everyone. And if by chance have a doubt, you tell me so that I'll repeat. Listen, I bought something. I paid VAT, value added tax. Can you tell me if I am a consumer or ultimately I'm going to use the iPad to teach you guys only? People, this iPad ka consumer is me or you guys? Hey, this Apple pencil I bought, this iPad I bought, is it for me or is it to teach you guys only? So ultimately, the consumption is happening by me or consumption. You only do, are doing it. You are only consuming. Are yes or no? So ultimately, what government says, no, Ramesh, whatever tax you pay, you have you can recover it from whom, everyone? Ultimately, the ultimate consumer. Now you tell me one thing. Earlier, what used to happen? Listen. I used to buy an iPad. I used to pay VAT. But you know what? I am a service provider. Do you guys agree with me? Uh, I am providing what services? So I'm registered under service tax. I'm registered under what, everyone? Is my point clear to all? So when I used to go ahead and give services to my customer, for an example, you are sitting over here, students are sitting over here. Take care. All these students go when I used to teach. What will I charge you guys? Fees. On the fees, what will I charge you? Tell no. Service tax. Do you guys agree with me? But service tax, if I have to pay. Can I use my VAT ka credit? I bought an iPad. Everyone here. I bought an iPad. I paid what VAT? He paid to the government. You know what? If you are registered under VAT, you will get VAT ka credit. But I used to be registered under what, everyone? And so I never used to get the credit. If I don't get the credit, can you tell me the cost of the iPad for me? One lakh. It means. When I am collecting the fees from you, that iPad ka also little cost will I collect from you only or not? Ultimately, you tell me one thing: the iPad ka cost, including the VAT, will I collect from you or I will not collect? See, the more the equipments I am using, all the equipment ka cost ultimately burden has to be borne by whom? The ultimate bakra, the consumer. Do you guys agree with me? So tell me one thing: in your fees, will this iPad ka cost come a little? Think, think, think. In your, in this iPad, is my VAT also included? It means on your fee, in your fees, is my iPad ka cost there? Is my VAT ka cost there? On that, am I charging service tax? What is happening? Sure, everyone. Shall I explain again or got it? So they are telling double taxation was happening. 
again due to non integration of vat and tell me one thing is there two two tax which are charged from you one is in the fees already there is a vat again on the vat what is charged everyone why this problem was there because when i bought vat ka credit was not given to me because why vat cannot be used to pay service tax vat cannot be used to pay what is that a problem okay you tell me one thing what if the government would have gone in and told over here ramesh buy ipad i will give you 18000 rupees ka credit and that you can use to pay your service tax will my fees may vat ka component be included cascading effect happen or no cascading effect would have been better yes or no everyone but vat cannot be used to pay what service tax cannot be used to pay what problem no problem tell no now what will happen you buy gst you sell gst use gst to pay cascading effect gone or it will stay is my point clear to all people are you guys slowly getting it what i am telling are you guys getting it everyone rain rain go away there is a training okay you guys are fine take one umbrella and sit everyone here now people is this point clear to all shall i explain again or got it my question is is service tax and vat ka integration there or not there problem no problem problem and that is the deficiency in the existing tax system shall i explain again or got it louder everyone everyone got it see if you don't tell if everyone does not say yes then i will not go ahead shall i explain again can i go ahead yes. chalo first of all cascading effect understood secondly who does not get credit trader wholesaler don't get credit if i don't get credit it will become part of my if it becomes part of my cost what will happen tax on tax is it good or bad thirdly vat and service tax integration they are not there so will i get vat ka credit if i am a service provider can i use vat to pay service tax so it will become part of my on one item to to tax vat also and service tax also can i go ahead everyone next earlier there were several taxes which were there which were not subsumed like luxury tax lt means what everyone lux sir i want to write you write over here only luxury tax write over here only luxury tax people watching at home are we all 100% clear till here ठीक है, everyone over here now, listen, and one more ET is there ET, oh ho, just a second everyone, ha, okay, we are back, ET, ET means what everyone, entertainment tax, everyone listen, earlier there always used to be what everyone luxury tax, on luxury hotels, when they used to sell rooms and all, they used to charge what luxury tax. See earlier taxes, VAT was there, excise duty was there, state excise duty was there, luxury tax was there, entertainment. You go to a movie, ठीक है? You go to see a movie. Then बाबा movie में what is there? Entertainment tax is there. तो government used to say so many taxes were not subsumed. Not subsumed means not done swaha. So many taxes were there. Someone is starting state excise duty, central excise duty, VAT, something CST also used to be there. Luxury tax used to be there, so government is selling so many taxes was a bigger problem in the earlier tax system, and these were the problems which are there. To solve this problem, what they got? Let's understand the various features of GST. Everyone, listen over here. What do you mean by features again? What are my features? Eyes are there, nose is there, like that. What is the features of GST? Number one, GST is a tax. First, only this much. GST is a it's a tax yes or no everyone what is tax 
इट्स ए कंपलसरी पेड टू दो दैट गवर्नमेंट कैन प्रोवाइड लाइक इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर एजुकेशन रोड एक्सेट्रा नेक्स्ट इट्स ए टैक्स ऑन सप्लाइंग ऑफ गुड्स एंड सर्विस पीपल वेन एवर गुड्स एंड सर्विस इज बींग सप्लाइड वॉट इज द टैक्स दैट इज चार्ज जीएसटी सो जीएसटी इज ए टैक्स ऑन वॉट सप्लाइंग ऑफ वॉट गुड्स एंड सर्विस नेक्स्ट इट्स ए कंजम्पन टैक्स वट डू वी कॉल इट कंजम्पन टैक्स इज होल सेलर गोइंग टू पे द टैक्स manufacturer going to pay the tax or the ultimate consumer going to pay the tax so we call it ultimately what everyone it's a it's a tax to be paid by whom consumer the person who consumes will pay the tax tell me one thing if i buy the goods will i pay the tax or the ultimate consumer will pay the person to whom i sell the goods and service that person will pay it's a destination based tax i want you guys to understand one thing what do you mean by destination based tax listen there are two types of taxation systems which are there in a in the world, whole world follows i will first explain you number one is known as origin based taxation number two is, and one in number two is destination based taxation sir what is the difference between origin and destination based tax first of all people i want you guys to see till here what i have explained and then tell me and then we go ahead see till here everyone please see till here and tell me if you guys are 100% clear what i have already told till here please see <coughs> see baba see see till here and tell me sir what to see see you remember also we'll talk we first learned about gst ka definition what is the definition gst means any tax everyone with me any on of good service or both except alcoholic liquor for human anyone any doubt till here next we learned about tax tax means what everyone compulsory payment done to the government so that government can provide various public services like health infrastructure etc then we learned direct tax indirect tax the difference then i told you the problems in the earlier tax system and now we are talking about features of gst gst is a tax on supply of goods and services gst is a consumption tax now we are understanding gst is a destination based tax are we all 100% clear till here now listen gst is a destination based tax sir what do you mean by destination based tax the whole world follows two principle one is known as origin principle and one is known as destination principle see if i talk about us for an example and if i say india over here supposingly some goods are manufactured in us this is a us ka factory and some goods are manufactured over here theek okay? hai what they will do they put the goods oh where is the ship they put the goods in the ship ding 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 ship came here theek okay? hai the goods got unloaded in india now you tell me one thing where are the goods originating from where are the goods destined in yeah. which government should get the tax you are in india so you'll say india now if listen listen if i if origin based taxation is followed then us government will go ahead and take the tax but if destination based taxation principle is followed india will go ahead and take the tax now sir which government should take the tax ultimately i will ask you theek okay? hai you tell me one thing uh we'll take the example of delhi and uh, supposingly here there is delhi and uh, here there is karnataka i will go ahead and give you the example like this one is delhi and one is karnataka in karnataka we have only one manufacturer who is there who manufactures the goods okay everyone in delhi we have lot of people who are there who ultimately buy the goods from karnataka okay can you tell me everyone this person manufactured the goods in karnataka and he sold the goods to these people in delhi which government will need more money to manage the people and which government will not need much money 
विल कर्नाटका गवर्नमेंट नीड मोर मनी और दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट नीड मोर मनी दिल्ली गवर्नमेंट वाई बिकॉज देर आर मोर नंबर ऑफ वन मिनट बिकॉज देर आर मोर नंबर ऑफ कंज्यूमर्स द मोर द नंबर ऑफ कंज्यूमर द मोर रोड दे विल नीड द मोर स्कूल दे विल नीड द मोर मॉल्स दे विल नीड ये सो नो एवरी वन द मोर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर दे विल नीड मोर हॉस्पिटल एक्सेट्रा बाई चांस आई मेड फूड आइटम्स एंड आई सोल्ड दैम सपोज इंग्लिश सम ऑफ दैम फेल सिक दे विल कम टू कर्नाटका हॉस्पिटल और दे विल वॉन्ट ए हॉस्पिटल इन डेली ओनली so which government will need more money if i go ahead and ask you where the number of manufacturers are more or where the number of consumers are more <laughs> consumers and hence they made gst a destination based tax they say when you have sold the goods to delhi the tax should go to which government karnataka government or delhi government <laughs> are you guys able to understand this point for example one person made goods in delhi and he sold the goods to karnataka in karnataka one person consumed the goods he fell sick will he go to delhi to the hospital or you will go to the hospital in karnataka only so when you are paying the tax okay when you are paying the tax just a second everyone ha hello hello so when you are paying the tax you would want your tax or money to go to delhi or you would want that your tax you as a consumer would want that your tax should go to your government so that when your government has lot of money your road your roads will go grow your infrastructure will grow education system will be better hospitals will be better you would want your tax ka money should go to your government or delhi government yes so all of you are consumers yes or no everyone so all the consumers want their tax ka money to go to their government where they are ultimately consuming so tell me one thing the goods and service tax will be made as origin based taxes or destination based <laughs> is my logic clear to all of you where the number of consumers are more the need of the tax is also more and hence in gst they have gone and adopted what everyone destination based taxation so if goods are sold from karnataka to delhi and consumed in delhi which government will get the tax everyone delhi government i will tell you after some time how the taxes ka movement will happen that we'll talk later but as of now tell me are we clear with the first three points which are there everyone is clear chalo i will go ahead and now move to the next one gst is a value added tax people gst is a sir but vat to gone baba vat is gone but vat ka model has been adopted in gst vat ka model has been adopted in gst i want you guys to understand this point but please tell me everyone are we all 100% clear till here people watching at home are we all 100% clear till here can i go ahead chalo theek hai if you are telling yes theek hai i have got some examples for you guys but you don't see all this thing now first i will go ahead and explain you and then sir but we don't have this baba this i am drawing every day and getting for the students so that you guys can uh, have something new in the class theek hai this anyways will be a part of your notes which are there theek hai whatever the notes which i am giving in the notes it will be there chalo i have got one example for you guys please understand this very very important but very very easy also for example one manufacturer sold the goods to the wholesaler wholesaler sold the goods to the retailer retailer sold the goods to the consumer now good people we are over that excise duty is gone already vat is gone already now we are understanding what gst theek hai let's understand how gst works one person sold the goods to the wholesaler wholesaler i sold the goods at 500 rupees everyone straight 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 ah please no, because some people are going ne slowly down theek hai so everyone straight now now listen when i sell the goods to the uh, wholesaler for an example gst rate on my goods is 10% how much is the gst everyone can you tell me 10% means how much gst will i charge and i sold at 500 and he went ahead and paid me 500 rupees and 50 rupees what everyone can you tell me what will i do with gst will i keep or i'll give it to the government how much government got anyone any doubt till here but you know what will happen 
this wholesaler will start crying intel sir government you made me the bakra i am not the bakra i am a wholesaler i will sell it yes or no everyone and hence my question to all of you is should he pay any tax or he should not pay but he already paid he already became the bakra what government will tell him no so i will tell sir i paid 500 rupees plus 50 rupees you collected 50 rupees i am a supplier sir from me only you collected 50 you paid me only the bakra we had a deal we will make consumer the bakra do you remember everyone and hence government will say okay okay no problem you do one thing next time when you have to pay me no pay 50 rupees less do you guys agree with me and pay 50 rupees less government does not say government says what you take a credit as of now write in your book and keep that 50 rupees government has to pay you that is called credit are we clear government does not return you the money government says next time pay how much everyone 50 rupees less is my point clear that is called input inward inward whatever purchase you did on that whatever tax you paid that credit is given to you is my point clear so it is called input input means inward pay inward means what purchase pay whatever tax you paid government gives you the credit can you tell me how much credit he will get did government give him cash back or government just told him to write and keep write and keep now tell me what will i do i will now sell the goods to the retailer for me who is the consumer as of now retailer so i made him the bakra I collected from him cost for uh, what is my cost if I already got 50 rupees credit 500 rupees I made a profit of supposedly how much did I sell the goods for anyone any doubt till here GST rate is same for all how much 60 can you tell me how much he paid 600 and anyone any doubt till here now can you tell me now what will I do I will tell hey 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 government listen how much did I collect from the customer? 60. Ah, 60 rupees government. I already collected. Is my point clear to all? Government, I collected 60. How much you have to pay me? 50. 50. I will deduct this 50 here. And I will pay you only. And second stage pay government got how much? People, is this person happy? Anyone any doubt till here? It means when I sold, I collected how much? When I sold, I collected 60. On my purchase, how much did I pay? 60 say I deducted 50 and I paid ultimately to the government. It means 50 rupees I kept in my pocket. Am I the bakra anymore or not the bakra anymore? Very happy? Now, tell me one thing. In this scenario, what did what is the calculation did I do? On my sale means my output, output means my sale. People, how much did I collect? Tax ka liability. It's called OTL, output tax liability. On my sale, sale means my output. How much is the tax? I collected. That am I liable? So, so it is called output tax liability. This liability I have to pay to the government. To pay the output, what do I use? Input pay. Tax ka credit, I use it. How much is the credit? And ultimately, I paid in cash to the government only how much? Please tell me everyone. Anyone, any doubt till here. Shall I explain again or got it? Okay, now what will happen to this guy? He will cry. Why? He, he became the bakra. Sir, uh, you took tax from me only. Sir, you took tax from me 60 rupees, sir. Government. Yes or no? Government, I paid him 50 rupees. I paid him 60. He paid to you. You give me back. So, how much credit will government give? Input, tax, credit. Can you tell me how much did he pay? How much will he get the credit? Anyone, any doubt till here. Can I go ahead? Can you tell me his cost? What is his cost? Anyone? How much profit? How much total? GST is how much? 10%? No. Can you tell me what is this called? On your output, output means your sales, tax ka liability. How much? Will he pay full 80? He will say what? Ha, ah, government, I collected 80. You remember? You had taken already? So input, 
tax credit. How much everyone? And ultimately you will pay how much to the government? In cash you will pay to the government. At the third stage government got? Can you tell me how much government got actually? 80. Can you tell me how much the ultimate consumer paid? 800 plus? Consumer paid 80? How much government got? Is this guy happy? Why happy? He collected 80. He deducted his 60 and he paid only. Is everyone 100% clear? In this third stage, government got only 20. See, Baba, people. First stage, he paid 50. But he collected from the customer 60. So he deducted and he paid only. Second stage, he got 10. And last stage, may, when he sold, he collected how much? 80. Input was 60. Deducted and paid only. Ultimately, government got 80 and the consumer also paid how much? Is it matching? Yes. Is this guy happy? Is this guy happy? Is this guy happy? Looks happy, but he is not actually happy. He should be sad. Are all of you are bakra, but are you sad? Indirect tax, you don't even come to know the pinch only. Already pinching down. See, you guys are smiling. But you guys already paid so much tax. Now you will go eat masala dosa in the break. Again you will pay tax. Yes or no everyone? So direct tax may, the pinching happens directly. Indirect tax. Indirectly who is the bakra? Is my point clear to all? Tell me one thing everyone. Why is this called value added tax is my question. Why do we call it value added tax? Why? One minute. Can you tell me, manufacturer, what is the value addition he did in the goods? People watching at home, tell me. See, he he made the goods. How much ka value addition of the goods he did? 500. On that, government got 10%. Done. Again, on this 500, did the wholesaler do any more addition? How much? 100. 100 10% is how much? See, directly government got 10 rupees. But, okay, can you tell me, this retailer did how much value addition? 500 per 100 was already done. Again, he added how much? 200. 200 per 10 percent is how much? See, government got 20. It's a tax on, the more you add the value, the more government will get the tax. Are we all clear? It's not a tax on profit. It's a tax on value addition. For example, 500 rupees ka item. 500 may, I, I did some processing, I added 100. And 100 my profit, how much is the value addition I did? 200. And 200 pay 10% tax government will take. See, can you tell me everyone, people listen carefully. Can you tell me, in this first stage when I sold the goods, I did not purchase it from anyone, right? I only manufactured the goods. Can you tell me how much ka goods I manufactured? 500 pay 10% is how much? Did government get 50? If he does the calculation, his output tax liability is 50, his input tax rate is how much? And government would have got 50. Can you tell me how much did he do the value addition? 100 per 10 percent is how much? 10 rupees. Can you tell me third stage may he did the value addition how much? 200 ka 10 percent is? Is my point understood by all? It means, can you tell me one thing? It's a tax on what? Value addition. No value addition. No tax. Little value addition? Little tax. But sir, how did we do the calculation? We did not do it like value addition pay tax directly. How do we do? Output tax liability. Purchase pay I will pay input tax. Credit. Output say input I will set off and I will pay the balance to the. Is my point clear? But this balance which I am paying is actually tax on what everyone? The value addition. Is my point understood? I will do one thing. I'll give you one more question. You do it and then we go ahead. One minute. Will you try everyone? I will explain, but you do it. It's okay. Make mistakes in the class. It's really okay. I will do it with you guys later. First, you do it. Chalo. Visible everyone? Okay. I'm putting it on Zoom. Everyone, please do it.
Ketan, first understand this, then I will talk later about it. It will come, don't worry, first you understand this. Ketan, all the questions can answer will come. First you understand the basic, then everything will understand. Slowly, slowly. Okay? Oh, okay. Tanish Khetan. Done, Tanish. People, write and take 10% in the GST rate. And please do the question. Here the profit is 10% and 20%. Do it. And I want everyone to get a notebook in the class. Okay? 100 pages per notebook. Everyone. Okay? Today is the first day. If you did not get, it's okay. Buy, beg, borrow, do whatever. Take it from your friend. Do it. But tomorrow, please get a notebook. People visible now everyone. Let me know once you are done. Done. Okay. You have to tell at each stage how much is the government getting, okay? First sale, second sale and third sale. Done. Okay. Can I discuss everyone or doing it? Do it, do it, do it, do it. Let me know once done. Cholo, let's do it. Everyone over here now. Compute the GST collected by government at each stage. Assume the rate to be 10%. Okay. Manufacturer sold the goods. This is the first stage. This is the second stage. And this is the third stage. GST is a stage-wise collection. People listen. Government does not say, first time you pay, then you don't pay anything. Government is selling slowly, slowly I will eat. The more you earn, the more I will also earn. Are you all able to understand? Chalo, let's understand. Selling price is 1000 rupees, including profit everything. How much is the GST? 10%, how much? First he will do one calculation. He will tell, ha ha ha, government. Output, tax. Output means sales. Sales pay tax liability, how much? How much credit he has? No credit. So how much will he pay to the government? How much is the value addition he did? Thousand. And value addition. How much is the item he produced for? 
So government got how much tax? Is everyone clear with hundred rupees first of all? Can I go ahead, everyone? Chalo. Then the wholesaler purchases the goods. Now, can you tell me is the is he consumer or not consumer? Okay, I will ask you one question. What if you tell me one thing? Supposingly, at this stage, what happened? No, the wholesaler bought the goods and went. His son came to his shop. He told Papa, Papa, I like it. He took that item and went home. Over story. Wholesaler became what consumer. Is government going to earn anything more or nothing? See, government got hundred rupees. Consumer became what? Wholesaler became what? Consumer. Will he get any credit or no credit? Because you are the consumer. Chain stop. The time consumption stop, government earning also stops. The time you keep it selling it more, 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 government also keeps earning more, more, more. And hence, CST is a stage wise collection. First stage, second stage, third stage. The time the stage stops, government collection also stops. Can I go ahead, everyone? Chalo, we'll go back. Thick. Are we all clear till here? Okay. He paid 1000 rupees. He kept 1000 rupees, 100 rupees he gave to the government. Can you tell me how much credit he will get? At any stage, a manufacturer, a person who is a trader, whatever he paid at the earlier stage, he will get the credit. Is my point clear to all? First, is it clear? Whatever tax I will pay, it will go to the government and government will give me the credit. Is this point clear to all? Now, what will I do? I sold. How much is my cost if I already got 100 rupees credit? This is not my cost. 1000. How much is my profit? 10% means if you see only profit is 100, it means how much is the value addition? 100. Can you tell me by seeing this only, how much tax will government get immediately? 10 rupees, correct? But how will we do this calculation? 1100. GST is how much? 10%. 100 and now what will I write? Ha ha ha, government wait. I collected from the customer 110 output tax, input tax credit is how much? And I will pay only. Can you tell me how much government got at the second stage? Is this 10 actually output minus input? Yes. But don't you think it is nothing other than whatever profit I made on that I am paying the tax. So it's called value addition pay tax. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Can you tell me? Ah, uh, now this person will start crying. He has paid how much? Thousand and hundred. Can you tell me how much credit he will get? People, guys, if you don't talk, I will not understand whether you are understanding or not. Everyone have to talk with me. Tell me. One ten. How much is the credit? One ten. Can I go ahead, everyone? Now he sold the goods. What is his cost? If he got hundred and ten ka credit. What is this cost? 1000 profit 2 this will be 13 GST is 10 percent how much? Can you tell me what will he do now? Hey, hey government output tax lab okay can you tell me value addition if you see and can you tell me how much is the tax payable? 20 how sir how how? This value addition is the over here and this is the 10%. So 220 by 10% is 22. Is my point clear? But let's do the calculation. 130. How much is the credit? How much is the ultimate payable? Is my point clear? And ultimately government got 22. Now you tell me one thing. How much government totally got? 130. How much consumer actually paid? Anyone any doubt till here? Lokesh, is this point clear to you? People watching at home, are we all 100% clear with this? Have, how many of you got 130? No. Up, up. People who did not get, please tell me what was the doubt. Is it clear now? Sure, everyone. If you are sure, you do one more question for me then. Ah, sir. Yes, please do. One more assignment I will give you. You do it. Let's see who do is, does it the fastest. Okay, everyone. Fastest but correct also.
one minute. This is five thousand. Profit is thousand, two thousand. GST rate is twenty. Chalo, you have to tell me. People, GST rate is twenty. Starting with five thousand. Wholesaler thousand. Retailer is making a profit of two thousand. People watching at home, please do it now. I want everyone to do it now. 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 Let's do it. Done, guys. Let me know what's done. Thousand six hundred. Okay, let's see. Okay, tell me one one thing, everyone. Over here now. Manufacturer sold the goods to the wholesaler at five thousand. What is the value addition done by the manufacturer? Five thousand. Why? Because this is the first stage. He made a product of five thousand rupees. There is no other uh, product which was there on which he has done any addition. It is a product which he has created of five thousand. Do you guys agree with me? Everyone agree. The value addition is five thousand. How much is twenty percent? Thousand. So first stage it should come how much? Let's see. How much is the GST rate? Twenty percent. Twenty percent means thousand. One minute. Output tax. Input tax is how much? Zero. And cash, me how much to pay? Okay, done. Government got at the first stage thousand. Now, wholesaler paid five thousand plus GST thousand. How much credit he will get? Thousand. Anyone any doubt till here? He sold the goods to the wholesaler. Wholesaler, what is his cost if he sold, got thousand rupees credit? Five thousand. How much is the profit, everyone? Thousand. How much is the selling price? How much is the value addition? How much is the value addition? Thousand. Thousand by twenty percent is. So actually, it should come two hundred, right? Let's do the calculation. Thousand two hundred twenty percent, right? Output tax liability. Input tax credit. How much ultimately did government get? Two hundred. Everyone got it. Everyone got it. चलो ठीक है. Next. How much is the input tax credit? He paid how much? Six thousand and. How much is the credit he got? Okay. What is his cost? He made a profit of how much? How much is the value addition? Value addition. Two thousand per twenty percent is. So actually, government should get four hundred. Do you guys agree? Let's do the calculation. Eight thousand GST is how much? Thousand. Okay, output tax liability. Input tax credit. How much government got? Did ultimately government got four hundred? Total how much government got? Who paid this buck? Total, the ultimate consumer paid eight thousand plus thousand. So who has borne the burden of tax? The person who is consuming. That's why we call GST is a consumption tax. Does wholesaler pay? Louder, everyone. Does retailer pay? No. Does manufacturer pay? No. Who pays? How is it paid by consumer? indirectly how do they make them pay indirectly when they buy when they buy they always get the credit 
when they sell they always take the output and that output say whatever they have paid they keep it in their pocket and balance only is paid to the so ultimately the tax the burden goes on whom do you guys agree with me so now can you agree that dst is a consumption tax because of which system bad system what is bad system everyone can you tell me everyone no no not full form bad is a system wherein whatever you buy you get the credit whenever you sell you collect the tax this tax is known as what everyone output tax this tax is known as what everyone input output ke liye you will always set off your input and you will pay balance to the government did i bear anything on the consumer is my point clear to all shall i do one more question or is everyone 100% clear can i go ahead everyone chalo people you tell me one thing what did we learn till now we have to keep revising everything so that we remember also things right see exam mein there are three things which are very important which you always have to remember number one people number one is learning thing conceptually which we are trying to do it and i'm very sure you will not have any problem anywhere second thing which i want you guys to remember is you have to remember what you are learning also just imagine i taught you everything brilliantly you remember you understood everything wow exam mein there is nothing to remember you don't remember anything what will you write are you guys able to understand so second thing is to remember sir how do we remember something by revising are we clear everyone sir how do we revise in the class sir after class after you are gone how will you revise baba go to the youtube channel in the youtube channel also the revision is there keep revising can i go ahead sir old revision is there baba revise with that only it's okay can i go ahead everyone no sir what is the third thing you are telling first is learning second is remembering third is writing practice you have to practice writing if you don't know how to write you don't get marks sure just imagine i'll tell you the situation of student okay if i teach virat kohli for an example teacher i taught virat kohli everything about a cricket bat and everything about a ball first time he picked up the cricket bat is in the cricket field will he hit a sixer tell no students think first time they will pick a pen and write an answer is in the exam only new pen they will buy do puja aha ah, ah. first time new pen will you hit a sixer you have to practice in the classroom and for practicing people need notebook and from tomorrow i want everyone to come with a notebook then everyone the crux of the story is what notebook in the class so that we can practice are we clear see along with learning i will also teach you how to write because if you don't know how to write you will not get marks in the exam is my point clear to all one day i will tell second day i will tell third day i will tell if you get very good sir i will not get i'll call your papa can i go ahead everyone what else can i do otherwise ha huh. everyone over here now now tell me one thing what did you learn till now everyone with me with me we will see i'll tell you one thing 5 6 hours we'll meet every day yes or no we'll around to learn we'll enjoy and we'll go home then everyone the earlier you talk the faster you talk the faster i will finish the class and you guys can go home and enjoy done ready tell me what did we learn till now gst means any tax on what supply of what goods services or both except speaker for human tax means made to whom under an act to whom so the government can give a various public balcony boys and girls rail advance not up you also have to talk okay everyone people silent balcony boys girls i can't hear you ready yes to you tell ah okay can we go ahead everyone then we learn direct tax indirect tax are difference then i told you the problem with the earlier tax and then we landed up learning 
फीचर्स ऑफ जीएसटी वट इज जीएसटी का फीचर जीएसटी इज ए टैक्स ऑन वॉट सप्लाई ऑफ वॉट गुड सर्विसेज और बोथ बोथ देन इट्स ए कंजम्पन टैक्स इट्स ए डेस्टिनेशन बेस्ट टैक्स इट्स ए वैल्यू एंड ए टैक्स प्लीज टेल मी इफ एनी वन हैज एनी डाउट टिल यर जीएसटी के वॉट आर द बेनिफिट ऑफ जीएसटी Why did government get GST? Let's learn. Number one, creation of unified national market. What is unified national market? I'll tell you. Unified national market means now all India is one nation, one market, one tax. One nation, one market, one tax. You buy from anywhere in India. What do you have to pay? Will you get the credit of GST? If you sell, what will you collect? GST. Can you use GST to pay GST? Is it? Is cascading effect there or gone? gone? Buy from anywhere, will you get the credit? Sell anywhere, will you charge GST? To pay GST, can you use GST? So now across India is one market for you. You buy from this person in, in within your state, also you will get the credit. You buy from outside the state, also you will get the credit. I'll tell you earlier what used to happen. Listen. For an example, we'll go ahead and take the example. What your name? Sasang. This Sasang over here. Why are you so sad, Sasang? Life is very good. Don't worry. Take it. Ah, this Sasang over here. Take it. Sasang got some goods. Sasang is in Karnataka. Sasang went to one person in Delhi. Take it. This Delhi ka guy. Delhi wala guy sold the goods to Sasang. Earlier, what used to happen? No. If he has sold. This is from Delhi. If he has sold goods worth rupees 100 rupees from Delhi to Karnataka, earlier there used to be something called not VAT. VAT used to be charged only when the goods are sold within the state. If from one state to another earlier goods were sold, no, there used to be something called CST, Central Sales Tax. What used to be there? And CST used to be 2%. For an example, 2 rupees. So can you tell me how much this Sasang pay him 100 rupees and? This Delhi guy was registered under Delhi, right? He was registered in Delhi. So he will pay this 2 rupees to Delhi state government. How much everyone? Did Delhi government get 2 rupees? Shashank is registered in Karnataka. How much credit he wants? Then no. 2 rupees, no. So Shashank when he is registered in Karnataka, he will go to Karnataka government and say, Sir, sir. Please give me 2 rupees ka tax credit. Government will say, hey, whom did you pay the tax? He told, I paid to one person in Delhi. Who paid to Delhi government? The government of Karnataka will tell him, Sasan, you please go to Delhi government and ask the tax. Because you paid to whom? Delhi government. You did not pay to me. Yes or no, everyone? And hence, because you are registered in the state of Karnataka, Delhi government, ko if the tax was, you paid to him, he paid to his government. Do you guys agree with me? Delhi government will never give you the credit. When you don't get the credit, can you tell me, Shashan ke liye, when he is selling, what is the cost? One not. Supposingly, Shashan sold the goods within the state only. For an example, I am telling, people, all your thoughts, everything will go, Aram se, just listen how much I am telling as of now. Okay? Now you tell me, when Shashan will sell the goods, what is this cost? On this, he will, if he is selling within the state, he will go and charge VAT. VAT is supposedly 10%. VAT will be charged on 102. Is tax on another tax being charged? Yes. Is there a cascading effect? Yes. So earlier, what used to happen? No. No unified national market. Buy from anywhere, you will not get the credit. If you buy from outside the state, no, you will pay the tax to him. He will pay to his government. His government will never give you the credit. Are you guys able to understand? So earlier, was this a problem that there was no national market? It was only domestic within the state market only. If you buy within the state, you will get the credit. If you sell, you will use the credit. This was there. Outside the state, you can't buy. If you buy, you will not get the credit. Is my point clear to all? And was there a cascading effect because of that? Was CST causing cascading effect? Anyone, any doubt till here? Take it. Boost to make in India initiative. Now tell me one thing. If I buy anything, will I get credit? If I buy credit, my cost will go up or cost will come down? 
Why down? Because when you are getting the credit, cost will always come. Everyone agrees with me. When your cost comes down, making goods in India is expensive or cheaper now. And hence, boost will be there to make in India initiative because making in India will become cheaper. Is my point clear to all? People, don't worry about it. Whatever I am telling, no, it is everything is written in your textbook. See, it's a tax. It's a consumption tax. All the stories which I am telling, no, every stories are written here. So in the textbook, everything is same. What I am teaching? See, my my, I'll tell you. My habit is not that way. Consumption tax means the tax is. I I don't I don't I can't teach that way. What is my way of teaching? I'll explain you. Whatever I'm telling is already there in your book. Done, everyone. Now listen. Next. Okay, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Benefit. Next. People tell me one thing. If you buy from anywhere and if you get the credit, your cost will come down. Cost coming down means India may will people make in India or not make in India. So goes to make in India. When making in India will happen. It means many companies from outside will come and make in India because making in India is cheap. Yes. When many companies will come and invest in India, will employment go up or employment will come down? Because of that, people will invest in India because India may investing, India may making things is cheaper. Are when GST has come, now making things in India is cheaper. When India may making is cheaper, outside India ka people will invest in India. Investing in India, India may employment will go up. Anyone, any doubt till here. Next. Now tell me one thing. If I am buying, am I getting all the credits? I buy from outside the state GST. Will I get the credit? Yes. I buy from inside the state GST. Will I get the credit? Can I use GST to pay GST? Will GST ever become part of my cost or never? Never. So people, ill effect of cascading is gone. Are can I go ahead everyone? Yes. Next. Ease of doing business. Sir, ease of doing business has come. Why? Earlier. Registered under VAT. VAT ka books of accounts to be maintained. Registered under excise. Excise ka books of accounts to be maintained. So much headache was there. Now ease of doing business. Why? Only one tax is there. GST, GST, GST. Buying GST, selling GST, sleeping GST, always GST. Are we clear everyone? Next. Reduction in compliance cost. Earlier what used to happen? No. You are registered under excise. Okay. Okay. Earlier what used to happen? No. Okay. Earlier what used to happen? Excise duty be registered. You have to file excise car returns, etc. You are registered under VAT also. For an example, if I tell you over here, these manufacturers used to be registered under excise also, and they used to be registered under VAT also. VAT ka books of accounts to be maintained, VAT ka return to be filed, VAT ka all the compliances to be done, excise ka return to be filed, excise ka books of accounts to be maintained, excise ka compliances to be done. Now what are the compliances? Only GST ka accounts to be maintained and GST ka compliances to be done and hence reduction in, it's not that compliance cost is, go okay. How cost also came down? Earlier the CA used to charge for excise return also, VAT return also. Excise ka books of account maintaining also CA used to charge. VAT ka return, VAT ka books of account maintaining also CA used to charge. Now CA will charge only for what? GST. So cost also has come down. Can I go ahead everyone? Because you have to maintain less books of account, ease of doing business. Because CA will have to file less return, less cost for you. Next. Automated process with greater use of IT. For an example, if I go ahead and tell you over here. Now, any registration to be taken, any return to be filed, you just have to go to gst.gov.in. Can you see over here? Services. Sir, I want to take GST registration. Can you see over here? Registration is here. Sir, I want to make GST payment. GST payment is here. Sir, I want GST ka refund. GST refund is here. All the things can be done from the GST portal. Now tell me one thing, because portal has come, all the process have become what everyone? Automated. You can apply online. See, for an example, I want GST registration. Now click here registration, new registration. Go online, fill here. Sir, I want, the, I am a taxpayer. Which is your state? Sir, I am from the state of Karnataka. Sir, which district? Sir, I am from Bangalore, urban. 
you put this detail i don't want to take registration now take it uh, you put all this detail and you will be registered under gst automated process with greater use of it it means what everyone information technology can we go ahead everyone next sir elimination of multiple tax you tell me one thing is there multiple taxes there now but excise duty service tax gone or is there gone double taxation is it like sir earlier what used to happen service tax and VAT? no integration hence students were paying VAT also service tax also is it there now or not there is my point clear to all in my course VAT used to be there and then i used to charge you service tax is it there or gone now so they are telling now no multiple tax no double as benefit to small traders and entrepreneurs what do you mean by benefit to small traders and entrepreneurs earlier the registration limit was only 10 lakh in service tax and all the registration limit used to be what 10 lakh so if i cross 10 lakh i have to come under registration now with gst no the registration limit is 40 also 20 also is there i will talk about it but as of now gst registration limit is how much so if you are a supplier of goods in Karnataka, you get a limit of 40 lakh. So if you are a small person with 1 lakh, 2 lakh rupees ka sale, will you come under GST or no tensor? So they are telling, government is giving benefit to whom? Small traders and entrepreneurs. Government is telling, if you are a small entrepreneur, just started the business, up to 40 lakh, no headache. So it's a benefit or not benefit? benefit. Are we all clear till here? People, please see till here. Tell me if you are clear or can I go ahead? C, C, C. C till here and then we'll go ahead. People watching at home, are we all 100% clear till here? People over here, are we clear? So, people listen. Everyone here, see we studied only quarter, quarter of the pitch. Okay? But there are a lot of things which you have already gone ahead and learned. For an example, everyone in your textbook, I'll show you now. Okay? We did we learn what is tax? Did I tell you? Did we learn the different types of tax, direct tax and? Yes. Did we learn the difference between direct tax and indirect tax? Direct tax is imposed on whom? Taxpayer. Indirect tax is imposed on? Direct tax is income tax. Indirect tax is? Direct tax is? Indirect tax is? Feature. Did I tell you about the feature? Number one. It's an important source of revenue for the government. Baba, tell me one thing. Do all of you pay direct tax or indirect tax? Okay, do all of you, anyone pays it, a direct tax here? Indirect tax? Yes. All of you pay. Yes or no? So which is more revenue generating, direct or indirect? Yes. So it's an important source of revenue for the government. Indirect tax is a tax on goods and burden can be? People, did you even come to know that you got taxed? Did you even come to know that you got pinched? So there is no direct perception of direct pinch. If you are, just imagine your papa will come and say, today I paid income tax. But indirect tax you are paying every day. But you don't even come to know about it. Yes or no everyone? So no direct pinch. Promote social welfare. I will tell you how it promotes social welfare. You know, government says we are promoting social welfare with indirect tax. People ask how? On cigarette, pan masala, tobacco, the GST rate or the indirect tax rate is 28% plus says too much. So government is telling when the tax will be more, people will stop smoking. People will stop chewing pan masala. People will practically what is happening, you leave it. But according to government, what is there over here? Government is telling how it promotes social welfare because all these sin items. Sin item means pan masala, tobacco, cigarette. The tax is more. 
if the tax is more people will consume less and that is why government is selling it promotes what everyone indirect tax promotes social welfare and the last is regressive anyone any doubt with this then you learn what is gst did i tell you about article number 366 then we told you why gst what are the deficiency number one cascading effect number two double taxation number three no send back credit number four several taxes were not and the last one is cst is another distortion in tax uh, cascading effect tell me one thing did i tell you about cst is cst causing double taxation is cst causing tax on tax is it causing cascading effect so they are telling cst was also causing what everyone cascading effect what are the various features of gst everyone gst is a it's a tax on supply it's a tax on consumption it's a and gst is a value added anyone any doubt till here Chalo. everyone listen carefully now now i'll give you a quick break Take everyone, I'll give you a quick break. We take the break, we come back from the break and then we resume our discussion. Let's take a quick break everyone. <laughs> 